I did it. Isn't technology amazing, David? It is. It's the, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword for me. I I love it, and I'm frustrated by it. Uh, I am the same way. Um, Johnny Adam, my buddy from the Brewers, is going to pop on in a second. I have someone I want to talk to you about. Talk to me about, um, the. tell me about the uh, Treehouse. How are things going with the Treehouse? It's great. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I don't go up there that much because I want to go up there and read. <laughs> so I need to have my electrician come and mount, a, you know, a light over the bed. I but, talked to you four years ago and you still haven't done it. Done what? Put the light up. No, I haven't put the light up there. I mean, there's, I do other stuff to it, yeah. but uh, I, I really want to go up there and spend a night and, and just, cause it's, to me, that's out in the woods. Yeah, it's it's like a real Walden thing. Yeah, and you know? but it's there, and it's a you know fully functioning treehouse, bathroom, shower, TV, air conditioning, heat, everything. When it, you first told me about that, I thought you were pulling my chain. No, no. I... Then you sent a picture, and I'm just thinking: Is it kind of a refuge? Is it really kind of a place where you can go and just? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to, uh, John's coming on. We were talking about um, how um, I was talking to Ron Shelton the other day, and we were talking about how South California, Southern California, has its own breed of, of athletes. Were you athletic in high school, and not much? Uh, lightly athletic. You know, I was on, <laughs> you know, a softball team, and yeah. uh, I, I was, I, I didn't. I was on the eighth grade basketball team, but I, I wasn't. You know, I, I knew I had to either be in sports or a band. So right. I chose being in a band. John Adam, David Zucker. Hello. Hi, David. John was with the Brewers for um, 22 years as the head trainer. Then he went on the PGA and did the same thing. And we've been doing this county stadium thing. But it's been morphing more towards movie guys. We had David Ward on the other day. And oh. um, we talked about Major League because it was shot here. And But David, do you know him, David? Uh, do you know David Ward, David? No, I don't know anybody. I, I get this feeling that all you guys would hang out, you know, at the same club, the director's club out there. It just doesn't we really don't. happen. I mean, I, you know, I don't go to any parties. I, I just stay here. I mean, I have a house full of people here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've never been in the Hollywood scene. And, you know, it would probably have benefited me some, but I just, I didn't want to hang around with anyone. I mean, not that there aren't a bunch of nice people out here. But uh, I just, you know, pretty much just hung around with my brother and Jim Abrams and 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 a lot of my friends from Milwaukee. And, you know, we hang out. We, we They're here every Sunday to watch the, wow. the Packers. Why would you need to do the other BS, right? All that Hollywood stuff. Yeah, and, well, but at know, first, was it a little tempting at first? Not even tempting. Not even tempting. You know, we, we didn't care. I, you know, I just, I had Good my for own. you. Good. That's very good. Johnny and, and I. And, and because of that, you know, I never got into any drugs. You know, I, I cruised right through the 80s. No, nothing. Impossible. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and the price I paid is, I mean, I'm pretty dull. So that's, that's. Nothing wrong with that. Not a bad price. You know, Johnny yeah. um, is a Southern California guy, and he likes to bust my chops about being a cheeser. And I don't know, I'm curious as to. Your perception on people from Wisconsin now, I mean, Johnny, tell them a little bit about the balls you bust with cheesers and how the Southern California boys have a little well, bit of I, opening day I, for that matter. Well, you know, it just, um, I'm sure you can relate with it now, uh, now that you live out in Southern California and you're from Milwaukee. And, um, but yeah, uh, on the Brewers, we had a fair amount of guys from Southern California. And I'll never forget, one day Robin comes in and he walks in the trainer's room and, you know, he's quiet, unassuming and he comes in to get his treatment. And, and, uh, and he just looks at me and he, and Robin never says anything negative about anybody. And kid looks at me and he says, um, Hey man, you're not going to believe what happened. He goes, and he starts giggling to himself and he goes, so I'm driving, I I'm in the drive through in McDonald's because I've got to pick some stuff up for the kids. And, you know, here's Robin, the most low-key guy in the world. He's got a house, you know, they lived in Hales Corners, you know. And uh, and he goes, so, you know, the kids order their food. And he goes, and so I order a iced tea. 
And the girl says, oh, no, we don't have iced tea. That's out of season. <laughs> oh, well, I never heard of that. It's, oh, yeah. And he goes, oh, I do recognize the Hales Corners accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, but and, and he starts laughing and he goes, what? I've never heard that in my life. There's a season for iced tea. And so, of course, yeah. then Gantner walks in and Gantner like, oh, yeah. Oh, of course there is. And we're like, <laughs> and now now the other Southern California guys, you know, Jim Slayton and Mark Brohard, and we chime in and tell them how square they are and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it was always that type of thing. Yeah, I think Robin was from uh, Woodland Hills. Yeah, yeah, he went yeah. to Taft High School there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's a Valley boy, yeah. And I and I never met him, so there I can. Oh, you you never leave the house. So how the hell could I you never leave the house? And well, and they, neither does Robin. Robin never leaves his house. So yeah, yeah. and they well, I'll go over there if he needs to, me to. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 they kid me about uh, you know I never want to go east of the four hundred five. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, live, I live in Brentwood. Everything I yeah. have is right on San Vicente Boulevard. Every yeah. restaurant I want to go to. There's there's a tailor, there's everything. You know, we got it's not like a, living in a small town. I, I heard oh, a great no. quote. This guy says, Do you want to go to Europe? He says something. He says, Do they have something there I don't have here? Yeah. <laughs> and when you think about it, you know, like my dad was from Germany or he was born in Buenos Aires, but and I'm going in the Kettle Moraine area, Dave. Do you remember that? And we're driving yeah. I must have been 15, and my dad was a doctor and he was weird. And I said, Dad, what's it look like in Germany? He goes, look out the window. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my daughter's going to uh, spend her, her junior year in college in Milan, Italy. Mm. Mm. I'll probably fly there. Mm -hmm. uh, but and 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 so and I go there for a week, probably take my son with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, but. My ex-wife wants to meet me in New York and to because Sarah's flying to New York first and then she she gets her flight. She's visiting friends in New York. I just I don't want to go. I mean, yeah, I, I want to be with my ex-wife uh, much more than I want to be in New York or, you know, travel anywhere. Traveling. Yeah. 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 I got gotcha. you. I hate waking up early in the morning. And, you know, this is. Something that's probably in the last 10 years. I just, I just, there's, there's stuff I just don't want to do anymore. I'm 61 and there's a whole shit ton of things I don't want to do anymore. I mean, I look out the window and I have to, to shovel or mow the lawn and I'm really at a breaking point. I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know anymore. I don't know if I really want to do that. I mean, I don't have, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the John Adam or Zucker money to do something about it, but <laughs> at some point where you're yeah, just I, like, I, I really enjoy my money and, just uh, I don't have to do anything, and I I can hire a guy to shovel my yeah. lawn. There, 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 there you go. If it ever snows in Brentwood, yeah. yeah. As soon as it snows in Brentwood, that sounds like a Christmas movie. Yeah, uh, it oh, snows yeah. in Brentwood. A Christmas song. You <laughs> no, start even better. Song. Even better. You know what's a great Christmas movie is Elf. Really? Oh, I agree. I it's in, it's in my top three. Yeah, yeah it's so funny and. Will Ferrell is so great. He is. He is. Uh, but they, you know, they don't make comedies anymore. So what? What can you do? Well, what was the last good comedy you saw, David? I mean, can you remember? And and I, my thing that is comedic to me is, oh, the movie will be out uh, the theaters on Friday. It'll be streaming by Monday. I mean, that's how quick it is I, now, and it's mind blowing. Somebody just texted me an article about that. The you know, uh, the trouble with comedies in theater. In, not being in theaters is that you can't see it with the uh, with the whole audience laughing along. Yeah, I get it. In comedy, you can still watch. You know, my favorite two movies in the whole world history of movies are Godfather one and two. You can watch those. Uh, you know, by yourself with me, or, or 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 a horror movie. But a comedy really is greatly helped by having that communal. So. The communal. You know, one bit that, you know, you've done so much in your catalog, but th there's one little snippet of something you did in uh, Naked Gun when when Priscilla Presley and Leslie are coming out of Platoon laughing. Yeah. Right? You remember? 
Do you have, do you have any idea what gold that is? I mean, you know, how do I, but 38 years later, remember that so vividly? It was just a, a throwaway. You know, I mean, to you probably. It's great. A lot of the jokes were done without, you know, actors having to be funny. Right. You know, um, Chevy Chase, I thought was excellent in his movies. You know, in, in his heyday, boy, was he good. Mm -hmm. but, but, but he was, he's a real comic actor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Leslie or Priscilla or, or Robert, Stan they didn't really have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they just had to, you know, act it, which, which was a whole, whole different thing. They just remade Fletch, I heard, with John Hamm. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it. Hmm. But I can't imagine how that would be because John Hamm is not a comic per se. Yeah. But he was, he was an excellent dramatic actor. Yeah, and I heard he loves comedy, but I it doesn't don't mean you can do comedy. It doesn't mean you can do comedy. You can do, you know, the kind of spoof comedy that we do, which I think yeah. any actor could do. I'm not a big fan of Chevy Chase, but I know what you're talking about. Um, but there, ha Chevy Chase's characters in Fletch was vulnerable. There's a certain amount of vulnerability. Yeah, but boy, character, he, which was, he was funny. He was like runningly funny in that. He was being funny. And, and so is Bill Murray in his movies. You I'll, give, I'll give Caddyshack a yeah. close second place to Airplane. I mean, in terms of its longevity, in terms of its... And Harold Ramis was behind all that, right? I mean, yeah, Harold, Harold Ramis is a great director. Get... And his, he's got one of my top five movies, you know, comedy or no, uh, Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. So brilliant. And... Uh, who, who directed that? Harold directed... Wow. Oh, I heard. I heard in a in an interview that he finally told someone how many nights did how many days did Bill Murray's character wake up, and he said this is Harold Ramis said ten thousand times, and apparently that's when the Buddhists feel you really receive enlightenment is after ten thousand whatever, and I thought Ramis was a little bit Buddhist, wasn't he? Didn't he have a little bit of that working? I didn't know him that well. You know, I would have lunch with him or dinner occasionally, and I bought his house. Uh, you know, uh, we were, was nice of you. he was as close as anybody in Hollywood was to me, which is not very close. But, um, and then, you know, we did a movie called Brain Donors. Hmm. And and I had lunch with him just trying to get him to direct Brain Donors. Well, because we, Jerry and I were busy doing something else. I think I was doing one of the Naked Guns. But uh, he turned it down. Uh hmm. But he said something that was that I've used a line after that for a lot when I turn stuff down, if I'm ever asked to do anything. I, and Ramis said, I want to see this movie. He said the script was great, but I want to see this movie more than I want to direct it. Can so, you put your finger on what yeah, that is, David? I, I, mean, I actually believe them. Yeah. What? There's something there, though, like when you get something, you're just like, yeah, I like it, but it's not me. Can you describe something that you've been through where you're like, well, just what Harold said. I respect the project, but it's not me. Do you recall something like that? Yeah, I, I respect a lot of, like, Elf. I don't know if I could have done that. Or, you know, it's just, I mean, some of these movies. And that wasn't I, that John Favreau? Did Favreau do Elf? Favreau directed that, and I don't think I could have done a better job of that. But I'm, I'm pretty specific about what I do. And, you know, I can do spoof really well. And that's, you know, that's what my comfort zone is. And yeah, and I have a couple of scripts, and but you know it's hard to get work as an old white guy. Yeah, trust me, <laughs> I know the feeling. Are you, um, what's his name? Cameron spent what two billion dollars on Avatar, and I have no desire to see it, and I, I won't. Isn't that frightening to think somebody could see Frank Capra spending four hundred million on a film, and I have no desire to see it? Yeah, but I, I oddball. I don't think it's a reflection on how good Avatar is. I mean, I haven't seen it either. In fact, that's what my, on my Instagram, that's what my line is. It, it, I think it might be on Instagram, but, uh, but it says, it says I've never seen, I have still yet to see Avatar, but I, I just was not interested in it, but I don't, it, it must be a good movie because it's yeah. been, so, and Cameron is, you know, he, there's nobody better than, than Cameron at directing that stuff. I mean, he's done 
some excellent movies. You know, Todd Phillips has done excellent movies, but I'm not really interested in, I wouldn't be interested in directing them. Did it's you see different. Licorice Pizza, something like that, these small independent films that still, did you see Licorice Pizza? No. It was it little films film? with Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. Yeah, no. I think it was Philip. I, I haven't seen no, My haven't point seen. being is there's still gems being made, but to, for every for every avatar, there's only a handful. Do you think in your day you still had a chance to make and would airplane be made today? I don't I don't think so because you know, not that audiences wouldn't still appreciate it, you know, hundred percent like they did 40 years ago, but it's just I think that in the studio boardroom, you know, the, the people who are the gatekeepers would look at certain things like, you know, the the black dude speaking John, you know. They, yeah, no, that wouldn't make it. That. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, I get asked that question, it when I we show we show airplane or the naked guns and they say, could you make that today? And I say, uh, of course we could, just without the jokes, you know, and then it gets a laugh. Yeah. But you know, that, that's kind of my... True. Yeah. Johnny, so, what did you, what'd you grow up with, Johnny, your favorite comedies? You're, you're just a little bit older than me. Do you remember when Airplane and the Guns... I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I Everything you said, I the only thing I would add was, is that silly um, Dumb and Dumber. I you know. It. Oh, yeah, you know, Dumb and Dumber was great, and yeah. by uh, these are uh, friends of mine, the Farrelly brothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in fact, the Farrelly brothers used to be on my driveway playing basketball with us. That was, okay. you know, basketball. basketball was a real sport that we invented I didn't know that either. on my driveway. Yeah, the one thing that's um, yeah. I've got to ask you, David. Um, you worked with the South Park guys. Team America to me is one of my favorites, and yeah. I'm an I don't think I'm a common person with that. Team America. I mean, I'm a fairly bright guy, and I shit myself when I see that film. Uh, do you like it, number one? And number two, what kind of humor is that? That I, I don't watch the show so much, but to I'm me, Steve America sure. is brilliant. I'm not sure what kind of movie it is. I, I, I'm not a person who thought, oh, my God, this is brilliant. I, I think those guys are brilliant. Uh, but it, it, it just wasn't my, and I'm, you know, I, I'm so focused uh, and would blind just on my kind of humor. And, you know, last night we watched Blades of Glory only because my family forced <laughs> me to watch it. Is that Kirk I, Douglas? No, that's... No, what, no. John Heater and Will Ferrell, who are both <laughs> oh, excellent. But I and, love Napoleon yeah, Dynamite. It's, I could see... Yeah, that was good. And so, But Blades of Glory, I laughed, you know, two or three times. And I can see that it is funny. It's a good movie. And it's certainly better than, you know, some of my flops. But uh, I mean, as a movie, because it works, you know, you really, you are into into these characters. And, uh, but uh, but I, I don't like to sit through the mo those movies. Yeah. That, that makes it. Yeah. It's, but even that, you know, the vomit scene in, um, in um, Team America, I almost felt a connection from Airplane to that. I know that's an obtuse connection. No, they they say those guys say that they were influenced by airplane. Yeah, and of I mean, course I worked I worked with them, and uh, their their favorite the guys they looked up to really were I mean they they were fans of ours, but they really loved uh, the Pythons, Monty Python. As did I. Yeah. So while, while but it was funny while while we were shooting uh, basketball. Uh, we had a, lo a long weekend. They went up to San Francisco where the Pythons were getting an award or something. So they met their idols and they came back and said, all the Pythons would talk about was airplane. I love Monty Python. I just, I think those guys are great. Is there a bigger compliment than what you, when you heard that? Is, I I, no, it was, it, it was great. I mean, I, I just love hearing that, you know, anytime somebody uh every time i hear that i'm great i i really warm up to that well here's one for you um stanley kubrick and i was talking to ron Chalm about this the other day he said white men can't jump was one of his favorite films and i won't understand that till the day i die how could that possibly be a favorite film of somebody what i consider maybe the, one of the finest filmmakers of all time it just goes to show you we don't know what so kubrick think. kubrick said that mm -hmm. oh 
And I asked Sheldon about it, and it just seems so incongruous, you know? It's yeah. just like me saying, you know, clueless. I don't know, that, that's another movie that I never saw. So, yeah. That was really? with uh, Woody, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. I like Tin yeah. Cup a lot more, but I, yeah. I think that I only talk to filmmakers only over 70 now, Johnny. That's all I do. <laughs> David Ward, Dead yeah. Damage that are over 70. I'm over 75. <laughs> Johnny, I don't know how old Johnny is. You're a little older than me. Late, late I mean, 60s. I'm before late Before I um, take up more too much David's time, um, his yeah, dad, yeah. your dad was a Braves fan, right, David? You, you, no. <laughs> it's like oh. my dad. My dad didn't know from sports. He didn't. But he took you to the game. Yeah, twice. Oh, okay. The rest of the, his favorite, his his best friend was a guy named Phil Lerman who ran Lerman Tire Company for, you know, 40 years or something. It may still be existent, but I don't know. But Phil Lerman would take us to the games. Okay. Mm. But one time, Dad did get tickets to the World Series, 1958. Mm -hmm. And wow. so I remember it. That's when – and Dad said he got two tickets. He announced to all – you know, all of us that he was going to take David. And so whereupon my brother and sister just screamed and they, <laughs> they took it really well. And so, but I ended up going with them. It's like one of the few times that I, I really did anything like that with just my dad and me, which was, yep. it was really nice. And I'm sure I enjoyed the game, but, um, but I, I remember, you know, as I, one of the stories that I gave you for the book was, uh, you know, I'm nine years old or something. And uh, there were these guys, really rowdy guys in back of us saying, you Braves suck, you know, go Yankees, you know, this, these Braves are a bunch of bums. And so I, I know from this and I just, I said, dad, are they from New York? And he said, they're from drunk. <laughs> I just remember that, you know, I'll never forgot that. But David, that was my dad's dry sense of humor where he, you know, he couldn't tell you a joke. He didn't know any jokes, but he would say very funny things with a straight face. Where did you get it from? Your mom funny? Was your mom funny? My dad was funny, but he, I'm not saying, he yeah. didn't joke. He was very funny. And anybody he would encounter, he would just do this kind of, teasing kind of humor i like that and was very funny but my uncle bob my dad's brother he knew a joke and uh, <laughs> did you see a kentucky fried movie yeah i play a guy in the courtroom and they ask me what my name is and i go shelton sheldon and and the guy says what does this mean and I, happy birthday to you have dear sheldon you know so that's and that was from my uncle bob he told me that joke and we put it right in the movie. I'm gonna, this is the last question is at 61, I don't feel any less creative than I did ever in my life. Where are you with your creativity levels? And is it something that, you know, is just keep being creative to you die? I mean, I just don't see any other point. I mean, does that make any sense to you? Do you ever make any cognitive thoughts that, yeah, I'm just, yeah, no, no, I'm 100% I feel creative. The only, the only thing that doesn't make sense to me is you're saying that you're still creative. <laughs> hey, I got fucks up the ass. I, that that mean, mean, I haven't achieved great, success, but it doesn't mean I'm not creative. Way, isn't that a great way to end this? But I'll tell you, I bought this book. Holy shit, you actually you bought it. I well, actually here's, here's my latest. Have you bought this one? No. No, I'm not in my other novels. Oh, no, that's, you bring up a really interesting point there. But this is great. And and because, you know, and, and I'm using it, you know, I'm, I haven't really read it. I read my part of it. But I have a. <laughs> you I have told a, us your part. I have, of it. A, I have a table with a short leg. And this thing is exactly <laughs> one and a half inches. And it's it's just wonderful, and it's you know so I, I it's so annoying when the table goes like All right. that. I said I had last question, but I'm going to say one more because I asked Ron Sheldon. I'm not blowing Ron Sheldon. It's not like he's the greatest filmmaker of all time. That's a bad visual. Yeah, but yeah. You're, I don't do probably, it. yeah you're probably prouder to know me, oh. but go ahead. But you, know, you, you know, you mocked my creativity a moment ago, but I want to say this. Yes. I asked Sheldon. I said, "Hey, uh, Holly, Mr. Hollywood." 
If you were to write, write, and write, knowing you would never get another thing produced, would you still do it? And I swear to God, he said, well, probably not. I'm like, well, F you. I have to do every one of my projects assuming it's not going to go anywhere. And then challenge you to who's a writer. You know what I mean? I'm not angry. I'm just... No, that's an interesting point. Uh, maybe I'm naive, but I, I do every one of my projects like I know it's going to... It's well, gonna, because you know, they are. And and I've got I've got two scripts that are great. It's just like I think they need time. Like airplane, we wrote, and then it took five years before anybody said yes. Okay, we'll make this into a movie. But my question to you is: Is somebody like me pathetic, or do you respect the the person busting their chops to try to get something done? You know, I well, mean, I write my knowing it's not going anywhere. Seriously, I I do respect that. You know, you have to be. A little bit naive and think that what you're doing is actually going to see the light of day. So I think I, you know, I agree with you. But I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's the only thing I got, you know, to keep trying. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident. In nothing. I've had a couple scripts come close, and, and from a guy from oh. Milwaukee to send scripts out to LA or whatever. I've been very fortunate. The Goodman Theater in Chicago looked at one of my plays once and subsequently mm -hmm. rejected it. I'm the most successful unpublished author you'd ever want to meet but, I, <laughs> I, but it doesn't take away from the creative process i mean you're cursed with it you got to do it scripts are tough i mean oh. look it's like we you know with, i've got a track record and mm -hmm. you know i'm you know uh, who i am but i it's like it's tough i can't get anything done well so, what i learned in my 10 years 20 years with hollywood is you're only as good as the person that's willing to lose 10 million dollars or 20 million i don't care if yeah, well what i you know, know ideally I'd find, because one of my scripts, and it's a film noir comedy, and it can be done for probably $7 million. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it for scale, because I love doing it. And what I need to do is I need to find a billionaire who is throwing 10, you know, under 10 million, under 7 million at something is like me investing $1,000. Right. You know, so, mm -hmm. uh, who just that, doesn't give a shit if they lose the 7 million or not. Right, yeah. I need somebody who, who doesn't give a shit. And, you know, the advantage there is is that you kind of get to go to the head of the line. And, you know, I I'm a director. I, you know, it'll it'll get, it'll get shown, and it it I think it's worth the risk to somebody, uh, because it's uh, I I can get it produced and I can make well, it. What's good. The the worst could happen it goes on netflix and breaks even that's right and you still you can still make your money back so yeah, that that's perplexing to me i know a guy that came out with one for very substantially less and i think he he made his money back and then some so yeah. with all the content needed today it's surprising to me that you can't get that done but isn't that interesting john even a guy like this yeah trouble because so. it's, i don't care who's yeah. attached i don't care who's gonna do it very hard, yep. but my my creative uh, drive is still there. So uh, you know, as you know, Jim, I'm writing a book. You know, I've got it's uh, called Surely You Can't Be Serious, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's been bought by um, uh, St. Martin's Press. So well, I don't mean to depress you on a Saturday, but nobody reads anymore. You know, it's it's truly startling. Uh, yeah. Maybe the three of us pick up a book once in a while, but you know, screw it. You know, yeah. reading, it's really sad. I don't care how good it is. I mean, Margaret Mitchell writing Gone with the Wind right now, they'd be like, really? Oh, it's tough. Yeah. Is that yeah. all you got? Yeah. yeah. Name it, one it's person. Too long. Who do you know that reads, John? One person, name it. Well, I'm surrounded by baseball players. Are you kidding David, me? David, someone in your house reader all the time? Is someone in your house read? Yes. Uh, one of my housemates, uh, <laughs> Ellie Shoja, you know, is a reader and uh, well but she's also an author so yeah, yeah. well yeah. I, I, from the bottom of my heart thanks for picking up that book i would have bet 100 bucks you wouldn't have purchased that thing and i appreciate it sure i'll uh and yeah. with the next time i'm in milwaukee, milwaukee i want you to sign it <laughs> and, see, and see how say how grateful you are yeah are you still coming <laughs> to see who's your buddy that you come out for the theater once in a while what's his name i did an article on him once um he's your guy blifford yeah, Fred Blifford. You keep in touch? You see him? Yes, very much. All right, and well. He, he's so. doing a show at the Riverside Theater on January 1st. What's the show? Uh, it's a kirtan show with his daughter. 
So I hope this thing comes out before then. <laughs> this thing will be out before your ass gets warm off the chair. This thing will be out in 15 minutes after I convert it. And I have, I'm going 1,300 strong in my membership, close to 1,400. So I know this was worth your 20 minutes, David. I know it. If half of them go to see the show, they could fill the Riverside Theater. Oh, well, yeah. You're not even going, so what the hell? Well, I, I don't want to go east of the 405. Yeah, exactly. God much forbid. Less, much less to Milwaukee, so yeah. yeah. Uh, let's swap. <laughs> Why don't we swap? We'll make a movie. We'll swap houses like they did in uh, The Holiday. You come here to my house in Sockville for a weekend, and I'll go to yours. And John, he's got this tree house he built. It's like, it's nicer than most apartments in a fucking tree in his house. Well, yeah, Brentwood still has trees. Yeah. Oh, true. we have wonderful trees here. And I'm in a great yeah. organization called Tree People, which is, uh, you know, we plant trees and it's a whole, you know, sure. environmental. That sounds like a really boring movie you could make. I could make anything interesting, Jim. There you go. You All made right. this conversation interesting, so I hand it to you. Well, happy holidays. Hey, to you guys, too. Thank you. All right. For having hey, and I'm really glad you got your computer fixed. I know. this is, It's wonderful having He ran uh, out to get it fixed, John. He could have gotten, he could have picked up an all, apple, a all, new apple by the time he had this thing fixed. All, all for you, Jim. You did yeah, it all for you. I really appreciate it, David. Thanks for taking the time. Sure. Bye-bye. Thanks, David. Bye-bye.